Six years ago, Germany signed a labor agreement with Turkey. It didn't just help the economy rise from the horrors of war, but also transformed the lives of three generations of people and impacted the arts and culture around them. Following the footsteps of Italians, Spaniards and Greeks, Turks rushed in after World War II to fill the demand for labor. Guest workers are first, these immigrants eventually became citizens and, in the words of Germany's president, are now the country's artists, entrepreneurs, vaccine developers, judges and MPs. And in fact, Germans with Turkish heritage make up nearly 3 million people, forming the largest ethnic minority in the country. Let's get more on this from Showcase producer Sedef Ilgic, who is also the founder of IstanbulBerlin.com. So, Sedef, tell us how big of an impact uh, did Turkish immigrants make on the culture scene and especially the music scene in Germany? So, Elif, thanks a lot for having me. Um, since the beginning of this year, I've been working on a project that's called 60 Years of Music, Zexahiaria Music. And um, this has been a chance for me to research with a project partner from Stuttgart, who is a DJ, uh, and her name is Nazlı Sadıç Pils. Um, looking back at this history, seeing the reasons of this impact and what happened, but also like what was not really seen, because there has been so many communication and so many uh, different aspects uh, that hasn't been recognized until now. And um, with different various projects, actually, they this history is being reread, and like the stories that are hidden are bringing back to life. Okay, what kind of aspects are you talking about when you say that they weren't really uh, mentioned until now? Uh, I mean, we uh, have the tendency to call the Turkish music market in Germany uh, like a parallel universe because uh, German music market and Turkish music market really did not coincide until one point. And um, like, for example, I would really like to tell you the story of uh, Ata Janani, who is a folk musician who did music in back in 70s and then he became uh, he was on a wedding and in this wedding there was a German person who came to him and said okay you made this beautiful music but everybody was happy before that and after hearing your music um, everybody started crying and felt really sad what happened what did you talk about and then he explained uh, that he's been talking about Gurbet uh, and being uh, not at home uh, and then this guest said to him that uh, he should maybe make this music in German language and then uh, he could also understand. And then he made this song Deutsche Freunde and uh, it means German friend. And after making the song, uh, he actually uh, like was kind of lost. And on the 50th anniversary, uh, Imran Ayata uh, made a compilation that was called Songs of Gastarbeiter, Guest Workers. And after this compilation, um, this song was rediscovered. It was only clicked seven times uh, or ten times before it was on YouTube available, but it didn't reach any audience. And now uh, Ozan Atajanani went back to making music and touring uh, many cities at this moment. Okay, this is an interesting story that really points out uh, to the importance of storytelling through lyrics, especially in Turkish-German music. Uh, these lyrics usually tackle identity issues, uh, which could be found divisive or unifying, depending on the perspe perspective, I think. So how do people approach this in Germany, Sedef? I mean, uh, the main narrative that is accepted says like the first uh, generation of people who moved to Germany actually did not, uh, were in a culture shock and did not really create, like, uh, could not really express themselves. But when you look at this history again, first of all, you see in the lyrics that uh, there's a lot of irony, there's a lot of making mocking of, and there's a lot of um, expression of the socioeconomic conditions. This is like um, Ulrich Gutmer, a, uh, a German um, a critic, uh, said, you don't really need to listen to a conference or read a book to understand any, uh, any um, deeper information about uh, this person's situations. You just uh, listen to this song and you understand what an immigrant lives in Germany um, as who came to, to work there. Um, but then when you look at the second generation, you really see the identity issues coming on the spot and uh, as an acute problem. And like 
Um, the rappers, uh, for example, after 90s and even before 90s, they've been expressing themselves uh, as against being judged by the origin and by also um, their looks and any kind of stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope this is not far-fetched, but do you think a uh, Turkish-German uh, art scene or music scene provided any sort of insight uh, for German society and perhaps German authorities uh, to tackle identity issues and their you know, handling of immig immigrants in the country? Yeah, I mean, this is a, a big question, uh, but then what I can say is at first, um, for example, when you say Turkish German immigrants at the moment, it's also a complicated um, wording because now it's the third and fourth uh, generations who are living in the country. And I think uh, it works both ways. It works uh, first them reflecting the situation and um, using music as a tool to look at issues and uh, consider uh, what's happening and like also to communicate. It's, it's a tool that, that can unite people, that can uh, really uh, uh, communicate with politics, but not only um, expressing, but also it's a two-way communication, it's a dialogue. Okay, Sedef, so um, I want to talk about hip-hop in particular because I know that Turkish rappers are really burning up the charts in Germany when it comes to uh, rap music. Uh, so how did it play with Turkish-German uh, perception in the country, you know, seeing the idols uh, as immigrants and, you know, all these rap stars that as not white people but Turkish people there? I mean... Uh before the 90s, there were um, far right uh, actually rising, and um, even today you can say this, but um, at that point there were a lot of racist attacks, and actually German rap, uh, German Turkish rap was responding to this racist attacks. It became uh, very important for many um, uh, second generation uh, children who actually uh, wanted to uh, hang on to this hip hop culture that was brought to Germany from the US and um, so they created their own uh, language but also within the culture, not only uh, with the songs but also the whole stenciling and graffiti and uh, breakdancing. So we're basically talking about uh, a three million uh, people uh, affecting both you know, Germany's music scene and Turkish music scene as well, right Sedef? Because they really spawned a generation of Turkish rappers here as well. Yes, indeed. Uh, I mean, uh, I can really uh, give an example as, uh, for example, Cartel Group. Uh, that was um, a group that was made of different uh, groups that is coming together and um, how uh, they actually uh, made like a breeze in Germany, but also coming to Turkey. Uh, they, they made this very big concert in the Inanu Stadium, that's the football stadium, uh, that uh, anyone who was in, in Istanbul would just recognize this concert. It was a bigger uh, audience than Michael Jackson, maybe. And so uh, they toured in Turkey, and I think they gave um, a lot of impression, a lot of uh, inspiration for the Turkish um, rappers, uh, for the starters. All right, Sedef Filgic, it was lovely having you with us today. Thanks a lot.